a, a big area where a lot of guys get in trouble. They see mm -hmm. the clip under the lid. They look at the trial that they have. They think it's, you know, close enough, and they go ahead and don't use the clip. And unfortunately, the way that those clips are designed to lay a, a full bed of adhesive over the surface with the trowel ridges as compared to just trowel ridges. And mm -hmm. so, you know, all of the manufacturers that, that have an all-in-one glue, their recommendation is 100% coverage of the back of the board and 100% coverage of the subfloor uh, right. using that, that uh, clip that goes on the trowel. Um, really tough to get that to happen where a guy doesn't miss a spot or applies it too thin or whatever. So uh, you always have to lift a board up every so often and make sure that you are um, getting the appropriate coverage that you need uh, to be able to, to meet that standard. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Pro Shop Talk. So this is our series here at the Master's Craft where we talk to our vendor partners about some of their products and processes that they use. So today we're talking with uh, Tim Mithy McCool or Tim McCool, who um, is one of the best floor guys that I've ever met. He is our territory rep for MAPE. Uh, MAPE or MAPE, depending on how you pronounce it. So <laughs> Tim, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself and MAPE. Okay, um, I have been in the uh, wood flooring industry now for uh, 42 years, so just a little while. Um, I have been a wood flooring contractor, uh, owned installation, sand and finish company for over 25 years. Uh, I have worked in the industry for uh, Bruce Hardwood Floors and Dry Tack Adhesives. Um, I have worked for the National Wood Flooring Association. Uh, I think I actually worked for, my, for the Master's Craft for a little while, and Good. now I have been with MAPE uh, for almost two years, and um, I handle the uh, Texas, Oklahoma area, and um, originally I was brought in to uh, help them launch their Ultra Coat uh, hardwood finish line, uh, which is doing very well in the Texas area, um, and after we got that rolling, we, uh, they were able to give me some of the additional products. So now I sell some of the patches and underlayments, um, moisture barriers, um, adhesives, uh, things that all go for the wood flooring industry. Great, great. And then uh, something I didn't really realize is my pay is uh, my exposure to is just in the wood flooring world, but they're a, they're a giant company. So you guys do a lot of things in the wood flooring industry and just a lot of things in general. Right, yeah, there are 14 different divisions um, in MAPE and there are 11 of those divisions in the United States right now. Um, so through all kinds of different construction aspects of concrete work, uh, tile, stone, um, they do uh, underground utilities where they have all of the concrete that blows into all of the tunnels of uh, transportation, all of the, they have uh, marine shipping uh, coatings for decks. Uh, they're, they're just huge. It's about everything. Well, great. Yes. So, um, uh, thankfully, we won't be talking about everything, but <laughs> Correct. Um, I think today we're going to talk just a little bit about uh, what goes under the floor. So some flooring, patches, underlayments, floats, moisture barriers. I know they're a lot of different terms and names for those products, but um, basically what you need to do to prep the floor to start putting things on top. There you go. Awesome. So uh, we'll start with, you know, the foundation, you know, from the concrete slab up. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a variety of patches, um, self-levelers. So uh, the difference for us between a patch and a self-leveler is a patch you can put directly to the concrete with no primer, a self-leveler. You're going to add a primer first uh, before you then mix up the self-leveler and start laying that out. Um, so being able to understand the job site and, and um, what's going on at the job site and which patch and which self-leveler that you might want to choose for the situation that you're dealing with. Uh, if you know that uh, you have a moisture issue um, and you're wanting to be able to still do a patch or a self leveler. We have a patch product uh, that's called Quick Patch. Uh, mm -hmm. Our Quick Patch is a product that can handle unlimited amounts of moisture. Um, 
that doesn't mean that it's going to stop moisture. It means that it can handle that moisture without uh, disrupting the product. Got so um, same goes with our uh, unlimited moisture uh, self-leveling product. It's called Extreme 2. Uh, you okay. would put the uh, primer down first and then Extreme 2, you could start uh, self-leveling, you know, a section of the floor or the whole floor. Uh, the nice thing about those products is that you want to, you know, basically make sure that you're going directly to concrete and not to some other uh, paint residue or anything like that. Uh, the idea is to get uh, it in contact with the concrete slab itself. Gotcha. Then once so, you... real, real quick question for you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you already talked about, the difference between like a self-leveler and a patch, um, mm -hmm. a patch, you don't have to put a primer down. Right. Now, is a patch, typically when I think of that, it's a little bit more of an isolated area, like you've got a chunk out of the concrete or something like that. You're not necessarily doing a large area as much as you're just, you know, going over a hole or something like that. Yeah, correct. So, you know, there are guys who will come in with, you know, on a house and they check the concrete for flatness and they only have a couple of small areas that are low that they mm -hmm. don't want to have hollow spots in. So those are the areas that you can address with a patch around okay. the perimeter. If you felt that, you know, you've taken up some tax strip and you've pulled up some concrete with it. Uh, those are, those are good areas for patch to go into. Okay. Um, yeah. So self level, self leveling, you're going to, you know, that could be that you're uh, wanting, you know, you have a variety of whoop de doos throughout the, the concrete that need to be smoothed out and you're going to bring up the whole level anywhere from, you know, an eighth of an inch to an inch, depending on, you know, what's going on on the terrain of the concrete. Okay, gotcha. All right. So then we talk a little bit about the quick patch and the extreme two, and those are what you'd want if you've got a lot of moisture. Uh, Correct. Then... So, so if, if you don't have moisture, then we have uh, another product that's called Planty Patch. Uh, mm -hmm. Planty Patch is our best-selling patch in Texas. Um, it, you know, if you know that you don't have a moisture problem, it's a product you can put down in a couple of hours. You can be laying over the top of it. So that's okay. a, a, a product that is uh, widely used, uh, not just for the wood flooring industry, but for especially for carpet and vinyl and other products as well. Um, the um, self-leveler uh, that, that you can use if you know that you don't have a moisture problem, the one that you guys stock is Nova Plan 2 Plus. Uh, okay. That would still need a primer. The whole deal with a primer for self-leveling products is that uh, the primer seals the concrete to a degree that allows the self-leveler self to flow out without all the moisture getting sucked out from the concrete slab. So that you so that you get it to flow properly. Now, there's a lot of guys mm -hmm. who unfortunately use self levelers and they don't use primers. And some of them I get calls from that, you know, things didn't flow out well. And some say I've always done it this way and it works for me. And but it's not the recommended procedure. Gotcha. Is that your your primer T? Yeah. So, the, I mean, Mape has. I think like eight different primers. Uh -huh. The one that you guys stock is primer T. Uh, that will do just about any kind of subfloor except for I think metal. So um, it's a it's a great versatile product. Gotcha. Okay, so you've got and then on that, let's say you've got the the Planty Patch and the uh, Nova Plan are your mm -hmm. products that you would definitely want to do moisture testing for. You wouldn't want to have a moisture issue. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, is there, I think you addressed this with the uh, leveler. You said an eighth of an inch up to an inch thickness. Correct. Correct. Um, is there a thickness limitation on the patches? Yeah. So on the planty patch, it's up to a half inch okay. per, per lift or per pour, as we call it. Um, uh -huh. And then if you're uh, going to be dealing with a quick patch, uh, it can actually do up to an inch and a half. So okay. if you have a very deep valley or an area where somebody's dug out a trench to put in, you know, some electrical and they've somewhat filled it with concrete, but you need, you know, a little more beef there. Uh, yeah, it can do an inch and a half in that patch. Okay, I got you yeah. on that. And then so, how, would, how would you recommend a contractor test uh, moisture to see, you know, if they have a problem and what, what are they looking for to see if they need to use one versus the other? Sure. Um, you know, almost 
everybody in the industry has gone to a, uh, I mean, calcium chloride has been around for a long time and we do mm -hmm. recognize that uh, test. We also, the insulate probe uh, relative humidity test okay. is uh, the two tests that we recommend. And so uh, if you're going to use um, if you're wanting to use the Planty Patch or the Nova Plant products, make sure that you do the test, stay within the, the guidelines, the recommendations. Uh, it's usually five pounds uh, for the calcium chloride test, and I think it's 80 on the relative humidity test. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, all right, so those are, uh, those are the, oh, quick question. Do you uh -huh. guys recognize like Pramex meters at all, or is it just calcium chloride and the in situ probes? Right. So those are the only two tests that we recognize as the appropriate testing. Now, using a Tramex meter to get a general survey of the, the land is a great thing to do, but it is not a go, no go style testing that we recognize. Gotcha. Okay. So that, okay. that kind of uh, answers. Uh, a lot of questions for me in terms of the two routes to go with leveling a sub four. You've got high moisture environment. You got a low, or right, acceptable moisture environment. Right. Uh, correct. So then, what are we going to do over the top of those? So um, over the top of those, if if you're using the uh, high moisture products, the quick patch or the extreme two, uh, you can then glue a hardwood floor down with um, one of our all-in-one uh, unlimited moisture uh, type adhesives. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be 995 or 985. And okay. you would use the appropriate clip under the lid to be able to get a, a moisture warranty uh, and use that in the appropriate fashion. And this is a, a big area where a lot of guys get in trouble. They see mm -hmm. the clip under the lid, they look at the trial that they have, they think it's you know close enough and they go ahead and don't use the clip. And unfortunately, the way that those clips are designed to lay a, a full bed of adhesive over the surface with the trowel ridges as compared to just trowel ridges. And mm -hmm. so, you know, all of the manufacturers that, that have an all-in-one glue, their recommendation is 100% coverage of the back of the board and 100% coverage of the subfloor uh, right. using that, that uh, clip that goes on the trowel. Um, really tough to get that to happen where a guy doesn't miss a spot or applies it too thin or whatever. So uh, you always have to lift a board up every so often and make sure that you are um, getting the appropriate coverage that you need uh, to be able to, to meet that standard. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I, see, I see a lot of, uh, just, just to address that for a second, with any of the all-in-ones you're looking uh, when you trowel it, it leaves enough glue so that when you press the board in, the idea is there's a there's a solid membrane between the board and the concrete. Um, Absolutely. That, Correct. that equation changes a little bit. I've seen in two common scenarios. One is a guy pushes a board in and then has to pull it out for a reason and pushes it back in. It's it's going to be glued down. There's enough glue there to Correct. glue it down, but now you've kind of plowed the potentially plowed the glue away from the subfloor and then the other one that I see is like if a guy is troweling to a line sometimes guys will go three feet out and they'll pop a line they'll trowel to the line they'll lay floor to the line then they'll trowel their next section of glue and oftentimes just between um, between the end of that uh, section that they laid in the next section there's like a little fine line where the glue didn't get because it wasn't coming out from underneath the last board that they laid before they went on to the next section absolutely i was on a job last week training a guy who i got 25 years in the wood flooring business and well i don't know why you're out here on the job site trying to show me how to spread glue and um yeah. So I explained to him, I said, do you, do you know how to use the clip and what you're supposed to do? And, oh, shoot, I, I've, I've used this uh, several times. And I go, okay, well, show me your method. And, of course, he pours it out of the bucket and then does his normal S pattern with the trowel. And I said, okay, so the rules are for any of these manufacturers is that you um, – key in the adhesive first that's with the smooth side of the trowel key gotcha. in that whole section and then immediately come back and trowel glue uh and then you have to comb it perpendicular to the direction of the floor right so by being able to do that he had he was the guy who had the two lines snapped and he was 
you know, stopping it a quarter inch from his secondary line, which mm -hmm. he will finish up to. And I said, by doing that, you're going to create a problem because you're going to leave a gap every section you do. Right. So over trial that an inch. And then when you, when you're keying it in, you'll smooth that section off so that you will have something to tie into. Because if you don't, you know, I'm going to, come back as the rep and we're going to see a peak every you know 20 inches or 25 inches it was a five inch plank that he was doing and you're going to say your glue didn't work and i'm going to take up two boards and see that there's no glue every 20 inches right. so he he was not happy uh, with with that scenario he didn't want to change his you know this is good enough and i said you know the biggest problem is you think it's good enough and if the floor fails it's not you that has to pay for it. It's the owner of your company. So, right. you know, let, yeah. let's be aware that this is a $15,000 job to start. And if it has to be torn out and replaced, it's a, you know, $20,000, $25,000 job. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. And hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you don't get to that point. And as with a lot of things, I mean, sure. you and I have both inspected a lot of floors and seen right. the fact that, um, probably 98% of the time, it's going to be fine. Um, two, Correct. 2% two, two of the time, it's going to be a, it's going to cost five times as much to go back and, and redo that job. So absolutely. But, jumping back to the products real quick. Okay. So you've got 995 and you've got right. 985. Those are your all in ones. Are those Correct. both urethane adhesives or what, what kind of adhesives are those? Yes, they're both urethanes. Uh, one is a, um, a, just a moisture cure urethane. The other one, we call it a hybrid. So it's okay. kind of between a, a modified silane and a urethane. Okay. Uh, it's something that they have created that kind of puts it in between those. We also have a modified silane adhesive, uh, and it's called 983. Okay. Uh, and it also comes with a clip. But even with that clip, we only recommend that it go up to like 95 pounds or, okay. or 95 RH. So, so, so how... Uh, why, what's the difference between the 995 and the 985 from a uh, product usage perspective? Like wh when would a guy use 995 and when would they use 985? Yeah, um, the, the 985 is a little easier to clean up. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has some of the modified silane um, ease of cleanup. Mm -hmm. And so if you're working on a pre-finished or working on something that is a textured or wire brushed floor, uh, I know I'd be happier uh, because if I got any on the surface, it's a little easier to take care of. Uh, right. The traditional urethane products, you know, if you get anything on a pre-finished floor and you miss it, you can etch the surface. You cannot be able to get it off down the road. Right. So uh, those are the things that you really want to be aware of. Also, if you're gluing down solids, um, you know, a lot of the solids have the big, deep hollow backs. So that creates another issue when you're trying to glue down using, using the clip. Um, that amount of glue, sometimes you, you have to adjust how you hold the trowel so you make sure you get as much glue underneath there as possible to, so that you can coat all inside those hollow backs as sure. well with adhesive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. Awesome. Okay. So one of the other things that you can look at uh, if you're trying to create a moisture barrier product is we have a, uh, a roll-on moisture barrier, and we call it uh, PMB, uh, Planty uh, Seal PMB. That particular product <clears throat> can be rolled over uh, either of the, the two uh, uh, high moisture patches, uh, patch or extreme two self-leveler. And the nice thing about that is that's a roll-on, and you can see that you've got everything covered. Yep. And then utilizing that system along with just uh, traditional 980 adhesive, uh, we uh, consider that 100% moisture barrier uh, protection as well. Mm -hmm. um, myself as a guy who's owned a business for 25 years, making sure that employees do things in the correct steps that the manufacturer recommends is great while I'm there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you, you go away and, 
uh, you come back, you realize they haven't always followed the procedures. Right. Uh, when you when you roll this on, you know you have coverage. If you miss a little spot with the glue, it's it's not the same critical issue as it is with the all in ones. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, one of the things I really like about the roll on moisture barrier kind of gets at what we were talking about earlier, which is um, ensuring that you have 100% coverage of the slab and being able to visibly see that when you roll it down. Because a lot of times, once you put the floor over an all in one, you don't see those gaps. In fact, I would wager to say <laughs> every time you don't see right. gaps when they exist. Exactly. Um, so, just the principle of being able to roll a slab, see, hey, I've got 100% coverage of that is is my preference of product. Um, Absolutely, correct. In, in terms of ease of use, and obviously, like you said, not every guy is going to be on every sure. job. So, so, with so the, the... I was going to I was going to ask, with the PMB, um, mm -hmm. am I correct? You guys don't, uh, you don't actually require testing for that. You just require that the slab is visibly dry? Correct. Absolutely. So the, the, the nice thing about ours is it only takes one application to get 100% moisture protection mm -hmm. as well. Um, so that product, uh, three and a half gallon pail, generally you're going to get uh, anywhere from, we say, seven to 800 feet. Um, I've seen it go as far as nine mm -hmm. uh, as well. So you're talking about a product that's going to go down for roughly uh, 25 to 28 cents a square foot. Okay. And then you would use the, the 980 over the top of that, and that product goes down uh, for about 35 cents a foot. Gotcha. Um, so now you have uh, coverage that is, you know, going to take you into that 60, 65 cent a square foot range to get 100% moisture protection as compared to using the all-in-ones, which a lot of times are going to bump you up. Uh, with a spread rate of, you know, 30 to 40 square feet on both of those products, you know, you're going to be at 95 cents to a dollar a square foot uh, using the all-in-one glues. Gotcha. Now, you know, this, go ahead. You know, the guys say, well, I'd just rather do it all in one step, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really a three-step process troweling out those glues. It's the keying in, the spreading the glue, and then combing it as compared to rolling out, um, the, the PMB, two hours later, you're able to generally install over the top of that. Um, uh -huh. And you generally want to try to, when you roll out the PMB, roll out what you're going to cover that day, the end of the day, roll for tomorrow. And then when uh -huh. you get there, you're, there's no dry time, waiting time. You, mm -hmm. you, we, we want you to cover it in a 48-hour window. Okay. So uh, we don't want you to go and roll a whole house on Monday, and it takes you to Friday to finish it off. Uh, okay. And you can overlap this uh, when you roll, you know, up to it the next day. Okay. So generally you want to cover it in about 48 hours. Is there, um, is there any method to the rolling? I know some other products are particular about how you roll them. Um, is this just, do you recommend a specific type of roller or a specific yeah. method to roll? Quarter inch nap roll uh -huh. roller uh, is, you know, basically the thinner, the better with this product. If okay. you roll it out and it starts and you've left a heavy spot or a puddle or it's gone down into a, a chip out in the concrete, it's going to turn yellow, it's going to foam up. And now in that area, you don't have that moisture protection because there's a lot of holes because of the foam. Those areas would need to be addressed by getting scraped off and a, another thin layer applied over the top of those areas. Okay. So, so basically, thinner the better. Basically, you just want to see that it goes from, you know, the dry looking concrete to the wet looking concrete. Mm -hmm. It comes out looking like oil based finish out of the jug. Okay. And um, I've had guys say, well, it looked like oil based finish. So I applied it like oil based finish and the thing, you know, foamed up and <laughs> they got 250 square feet of coverage out of a three and a half gallon pail and created all kinds of other issues. So okay. the idea is thin, 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 and you'll be very successful with that product. Gotcha. Um, is there a reason with, with that product you would use anything besides the 980, um, unless you wanted to use like an MS polymer for a pre-finished floor? Sure. Uh, you can use any of our uh, wood adhesives over the top of that uh, mm -hmm. and get that same 
protection. Uh, the thing about the um, 995 and the 985 is you would not want to use the clip because now you've stopped all moisture. And so sure. the only way that it's going to get moisture is sucking it out of the wood, really. So the idea is to uh, use the regular uh, size notch for the appropriate thickness of the, the wood flooring product. Mm -hmm. And then that way uh, you'll be able to uh, get it to cure properly. Gotcha. Not that it won't the other way, but we don't want the clip being used. Gotcha. So I would assume that as long as you look on the bucket, like of 980, and it has a uh, a coverage for that thickness of flooring, thickness and type of flooring that you're using. Right. 980 is probably the best route to go from a cost perspective. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I, you know, to me, it's just uh, it's it's the best selling adhesive in Texas. Um, guys are so used to it. Uh, they use it without the membrane, with the membrane. Um, it, it it's just our really go to product. Gotcha. Um, and again, one of the reasons I love that product is no moisture testing. I think what you had absolutely told me, told me at one point was put your hand on the slab, drag it across the slab. If your hand's not wet in any way, um, from a moisture perspective, you're good to go. Roll it out. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, uh, with, uh, that product, I guess the other thing too, that it addresses is, um, the ever important, I don't have a moisture problem now, but, right. a couple, but a couple of years on down the road, sure. all of a sudden that concrete starts sucking up moisture and um, you were good to go three years ago, but all of a sudden there's nothing to protect that floor. And so in a way it's fairly cheap insurance for 20 to 30 cents a square foot. Absolutely. So um, look, I went and looked at a job uh, where the contractor used one of our other adhesives and um, it was one that needed appropriate testing. Um, he had a uh, $49 meter from Home Depot uh, mm -hmm. that he said he tested the concrete with, uh, which of course he had no documentation or writing and that meter isn't really what we asked for anyway. Um, nine months later, the floor is turning black and pushing water up through the finish and uh, he, said that you know he did everything right and we got through the steps and realized he did no appropriate testing or any of the other appropriate things to know that that floor would stay there and of course it didn't and it only took nine months i mean i could stick my finger through the hardwood floor it rotted so much already. Wow. so um and he ended up having to you know pay for that floor uh, because he couldn't show that that was the correct adhesive at the time that he put the floor down uh, yeah. that but pay couldn't help him out Gotcha. Um, yeah. And then just to review real quick, I mean, my rule of thumb that I tend to find with uh, with all products when you're dealing with subfloor and subfloor prep is generally they want it to be dry unless you're using moisture barrier, um, dry, flat and clean and structurally sound, which generally concrete is pretty structurally sound. So dry, clean, right, right. structurally sound. Um, sure. If a guy was going to, I know we've talked a little bit about this with each of these products. If a flooring contractor was going to mess these products up, uh, which mm -hmm. happens from time to time. Uh, no. What are, they, yeah, what are the easiest <laughs> pitfalls for them to fall into with any of these products? All right, well, let's start with the, the patch products, and basically it's always overwetting them, uh, mixing mm -hmm. up too much water. Um, and then uh, I've had guys, you know, Planty Patch will set up pretty quick on you, so you have to place that, meaning that you have to put it in into the low spot and smooth it out. Uh, mm -hmm. And they'll put it there and go smoke a cigarette and then come back and try to start trying to move it around and it's already started to set up. So, um, you know, utilize, realize you have 10, 12 minutes working with a patch product to get mm -hmm. it placed. Um, self levelers are so much easier to deal with in that fashion because you're mixing and you're pouring, you're mixing and you're pouring, you keep, keep a wet edge. Uh, but I, I was at a job just not too long ago where they had used a self leveling product and, uh, 
you know, it looked white over the whole surface. And that's a sheer sign of too much moisture being mm -hmm. uh, into the product. And, and then I dug into it a little bit and uh, you get a good separation from the little bit of sand aggregate that's in there compared to the Portland cement. They don't stay mixed together when you got to oversaturate it. So that's generally the, the biggest issues you deal with with those things. Okay. Uh, when you deal with the roll-on moisture barrier, uh, applying it too heavy, um, not getting it down thin enough, you'll end up with some little runners of foamed areas or in a hole that you chose not to patch and uh, you had a buildup of the PMB run in there. Those are all things that are easily addressed and you can just retouch those areas up, scrape mm -hmm. all that foaminess out, apply another coat thin and within 20 minutes to an hour, you're ready to lay over. Gotcha. Okay. When it comes to adhesives, of course, it's always trowel size, uh, making sure that they use the appropriate trowel size. If you're trying to use an all-in-one, make sure you use the clip under the lid. I have been to multiple job sites where the guy used the all-in-one and I asked him what trowel he used and he brings the trowel out of his truck. And I said, what about the clip that was under the lid? Oh no, we don't use those. Uh, so we get a lot of guys who uh, are doing the engineering themselves on the job site with whatever trial they happen to have in the truck, even though we supply them the appropriate trial in the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things I love about uh, your glue. You put the trowel well, under the lid, so. Right, absolutely. And, and, you know, and I have some great fans of our all-in-one adhesives, and, you know, they're not a big fan of the roll-on moisture barriers. They, they just love it, and they do it right. And I've, I've actually, you know, a couple of guys tell me how great they love, they love the adhesive. And I said, send me some pictures of how you guys are troweling it. Just so, yeah. I, you know, oh, yeah, no, we're, we're keying it in. We're doing the right thing. We're using the clip. Um, and I've been on several jobs just trying to help guys understand what that three-step troweling process is for those yeah. adhesives. Right? Yeah. And then probably the last thing I would touch on with every product but especially with a company like Mape that makes a lot of different products that handle a whole variety of, of conditions and specific job sites is read, read, read the instructions. Um, always please read the instructions. Yeah, and the, the nice thing, we have um, a Mape app. You can go on and get it. Um, if you can't read what's on the bucket, you can, you can download that uh, technical data sheet to your phone. Um, you can print it out the night before read over it. Um, I haven't found too many wood flooring contractors who uh, want, want to read a four or five page technical data sheet, but yeah. um, it, it definitely is going to make you a much better contractor if you choose to do that. For sure. All right. Well, yeah. we've, uh, as always, we've gone over time, but that's fine. We've highlighted a lot of good products and processes. So thanks for uh, coming on and going through everything with us. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Daniel. Have a great one. You too. Bye.